Fourth of July weekend has come and gone, and Kevin Durant is still a Brooklyn Net for the time being. So while we wait for that deal, here is the Suns Durant Desperation Index on today's episode of Locked On Suns. <laughs> You are Locked On Suns, your daily Phoenix Suns podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We are back. This is Locked On Phoenix Suns. We are part of the Locked On Podcast Network, and I'm your host, Brendan Clean, a credentialed media member covering the Suns for the past five seasons and a writer at Suns.com and Dime Magazine. Thank you for making Locked On Suns your first listen here on our first day of the work week. Hope everybody enjoyed the holiday. Hectic as it always seems to be these days, but family time, relatively cool weather, all things considered for Arizona. So I do appreciate you spending your Tuesday here with me. If you're finding us audio On your favorite podcast platform, go ahead and hit follow or subscribe to make sure that this show lands in your feed every morning. And if you're finding us on YouTube, that's the best way to support the show. Go ahead and hit subscribe, that little red button down below, and drop me a comment telling me who you think is the most desperate of all of the characters involved in this Suns-Nets negotiation. Obviously, there's been some other teams linked lately, so... I'm not going to focus on that quite yet. I continue to believe that the Suns are in the driver's seat. All of the betting books tell you that the Suns are the favorites to land Durant. We have not heard that he would be intrigued or excited to go anywhere else yet. The Heat don't seem to be um, that heavily involved at this time because they don't seem to be able to put together all that good of a package. So it's just the main central characters, leadership, players, coach, We'll go through each and every major player and character in this negotiation and how desperate they are. Today's show, guys, brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered all year long with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. All right, let's start off. Number one in our Suns Kevin Durant negotiation trade desperation index. That is a, a we're workshopping the name. It's a little long. James Jones, the general manager of the Phoenix Suns, of course, and here. I'll, I'll do the case for and against desperation on his part. And I'll do that for every player, every person we talk about. His entire general manager legacy kind of hinges on this thing. This one's kind of a no-brainer. This is an obvious desperate person in the middle of all of this. He chose not to extend the number one overall pick that he inherited when he became GM. And if he does miss on Kevin Durant, which is still obviously a possibility... He will have ruined the relationship with DeAndre Ayton, lost leverage with him as a, as a trade piece, and um, will just be stuck with a team that just showed that it lost in the second round for a variety of reasons, but ultimately just did not get the job done. If they get Kevin Durant, but they give up a little bit too much, which in my opinion would be if they did have to give up Ayton, Bridges, and Johnson, it would be pretty difficult to build a team that feels like it has an an obvious shot at a championship. If you have Durant, Booker, and Paul, but not much else, I don't think you're the favorite necessarily. I mean, maybe the, maybe the betters around America put you as the favorite because it's fun to bet on the team that just got the hot new commodity, but that team would not be a no brainer pick by any means. So this is walking a very tight rope. It really is. So, um, all of that said, I think if, if Robert Sarver were to stay in place, and even if there's a, a new leadership, I don't know, we're not have to get into that, but James Jones' job could be on the line at, at the end of all of this. And if Aitman and Bridges both go out in the Kevin Durant deal, I just feel like even if they keep Kevin, Cam Johnson or whatever it looks like, there's just not a lot of middle ground here in the way that Jones has approached this offseason between winning a championship and eventually having to completely start over. And there's a lot of different permutations of how you get there, but those two outcomes – feel like the main two things that that he's facing down. And it's just a really tough place to be in. So James Jones' desperation level, drum roll, nine out of 10. I just think everything is on the line for him. Um, but he is a pretty young general manager and he does have about as much <clears throat> goodwill built up here in Phoenix 
with his owner, with his coach, with everybody, that I don't think this is really necessarily going to make or break his entire career or anything like that, but it is a, a very, very tricky spot. Next up, we have Joe Sai. I think he, to me, is the main uh, puppeteer, so to speak, in Brooklyn, more so than Sean Marks, because I we will get to Sean Marks, but... Um, I think if Robert Sarver was not in such a precarious spot with the investigation, I would have put Sarver. The owner is always going to be the one who makes or breaks it. Everybody else in the organization changes over time. The ownership does not. So that's why I put Sai here. Sarver would have been involved, but I just don't know what to make of his situation. So I bring you this quote from Joe Varden at The Athletic, who is like a senior NBA writer over there, but has always been pretty plugged in with Kyrie because he covered the Cavs during the LeBron years. And he wrote something about Joe Sy recently that was pretty, pretty interesting, had some nuggets in it. Um, here's how he ended that piece, though. He wrote, quote, what Sy will not do is demand Durant honor his contract in Brooklyn because he's had enough, he being Sy. Somewhere along the path of Josiah's goal of bringing the Nets to respectability, to being just a normal NBA franchise that takes advantage of its market in, in the right ways. He ceded control completely to two players in Kyrie and KD, who ultimately proved to be pretty poor shepherds of this franchise. I talked last week about Brian Windhorst reporting something somewhat similar that Josiah basically just wants a team that can continue to win and make money and just be normal in Brooklyn. So I don't think that there's, look, his job's not on the line. He owns the team, but I feel like more so than anything else, um, Joe side just wants to make money, be competitive and be normal. And so there is a certain amount of desperation that comes with wanting to nail this, these two trades really, to set them up on that path. So Joe size desperation level to me is a six out of 10 because all of that being said, I actually think the reporting that's out there is that he's going to get a pretty nice reset for his franchise by trading Kevin Durant, trading Kyrie Irving. It looks like he's going to get a nice player or two and a huge haul of picks for Durant. And it looks like the, the Nets are doing a good job of demanding that the Lakers in, take back a pretty bulk of salary in the Lakers, if, if it is the Lakers that do that deal for Kyrie. So you're getting off of your money, you're getting young players in the door, and you're getting picks. That's about all you could possibly want. So I think they can maybe land this plane, and Cy can do what he wants to do. Next up, players, Kevin Durant, Chris Paul. What is their level of desperation as these negotiations play out? First, today's show brought to you by betonline.net. BetOnline is your number one source for all sports betting needs and info all year long. For the latest developments, league analysis, and news, including the baseball regular season, Wimbledon, golf, all of it during this summer. Uh, I'm sure there's going to be summer league odds too. It's an interesting little point in the year. Um, I'm going to be watching the women's Euros for, for soccer. I'm sure there will be odds there. BetOnline, your continued source for all info, including live betting, esports, scores, podcasts, news, analysis, all of it. Let's see, what do we have here for basketball here on this fine, fine 4th of July? NBA Futures, championship odds. Let's see if the Suns remain at the top. They are tied with the Golden State Warriors at plus 625. The Brooklyn Nets have cascaded down to plus 4,500. So you can keep up with the free agency of it all as well betonline.net the fastest and easiest way to check in on all of your favorite sports make bets and learn what you need to know bet online where the game starts kevin durant the man at the center really more than anybody else at all of this what is his level of desperation let's go through it so i think first and foremost kevin durant's going to continue to win no matter where he goes right but I think we also can say with pretty good certainty that KD is also chasing that, I don't even want to say post-Warriors title because he never won one before the Warriors, right? He needs to win. He, he probably is driven to win <clears throat> a championship of any sort outside of Golden State, right? 
But I also think if you listen to interviews, you see what he tweets, et cetera, he seems to want to also be comfortable, respected, treated as an equal in an organization, all the things that, and this is where you do sort of understand his frustration in general. LeBron, Curry, Duncan, these guys are all of those things. They're comfortable where they are. They're respected where they are. They're treated as equals among management. Like we laughed because it was Kyrie Irving who said like, oh, you know, Sean and Steve and Kevin and I need to figure this franchise out and blah, blah, blah. And of course, Kyrie Irving is not at that level, but Kevin Durant is. So I think that's important to him too. On the bad side of this for him, he may have jumped the gun on the trade request, opening the door for himself to get sent somewhere he doesn't really want to be, even if I think that's a little bit unlikely. And I think he also might have put Phoenix into a little bit of a bidding war that carves out maybe too much of the current Suns roster and makes it hard to win a title here. I don't know. But I think the if it had been possible for him to sort of negotiate a trade alongside the Nets front office a little bit more quietly, <clears throat> I wonder if he wouldn't have ended up in a better situation where he doesn't send the entire NBA into a circus and he doesn't... Maybe the Suns can get him for less if it doesn't turn into, okay, we're taking offers from the whole league. Maybe it was always going to be that, even if he did keep it quiet and didn't turn it into a full-blown request straight to the top of the organization with Joe Sy. But nevertheless, there is a pretty good amount at stake here. Like Kevin Durant's legacy is sealed. I don't think he needs another championship to get where he wants to go in the grand scheme of the, the history of the league. I don't think he has anything left to prove, quote unquote, but he's still a very, very impactful NBA player and he's a legend and, and he wants to maximize the rest of his career, I'm sure. So Kevin Durant's desperation level in our desperation index here on today's show, eight out of 10. I think mostly it's just he wants, he needs to land in the right place. If you're looking at it from Kevin Durant's standpoint, he needs to land in the right place and show he can still win at a high level. And that it's just, uh, it's a hard thing to do. I mean, to be where he wants to be and a place where he can win. I mean, he thought that was Brooklyn and look how that turned out. So it, it can be harder, easier, can be easier said than done is, is my point there. Um, Chris Paul is next up here in our desperation index. So let's go through the Chris Paul side of things at age 37. Chris might end up making out better than just about anybody in this whole thing if Durant ends up here because Durant can kind of become a little bit of a lifeline for Chris Paul at the end of his career. Now, obviously Devin Booker has been that in his own way, but um, Durant would just be yet another massive boost for Paul's ability to continue to compete for championships as he fades into retirement eventually. On the other hand, the particulars of Durant, the more that I have time to marinate in this and we all just are left in uh, in waiting a little bit here is meshing with Durant to me would require Paul giving up the ball and control of the offense, even more than he sort of has had to with Booker. Um, and this has been a little bit of a, it's been a while since Chris Paul was truly the alpha and the omega of an offense. You have to go all the way back to when he was a clipper for that to really be true. Since then he's played with James Harden, who took the ball out of his hands almost entirely those, that Thunder season where he was with the three-guard lineup, the, the three-headed monster with Shea and Dennis Schroeder. And then with Booker, they've, they've, they've meshed really well and been able to, to play sort of tag team at a high level. So I'm not sure it's a huge deal. I'm not saying that, that Chris giving the ball to a legend like Kevin Durant would just be some sort of hiccup, but it would be an adjustment. At the same time, if, if Katie comes in and helps the Suns finally get a championship, then Chris Paul finally gets the monkey off of his back. He is blamed a little bit less, I think, for the failures that the Suns have struggled through in the 2021 and 2022 playoffs where they lost the finals and then lost to Luka and the Mavs in the second round, largely because of and in conjunction with Chris Paul slipping. So the last part here, too, is I think if the KD thing works, Chris Paul probably gets his money all the way through that partial guaranteed season. He, in 2024-25, which would be, you know, he's basically going to be 40. 
Um, that's non-guaranteed. I think that that season has always been sort of fake and they will stretch him out and maybe he gets that money, but it's over three years or something. Um, feels to me like if they can win a championship, they'll guarantee that partial guaranteed season for sure, probably keep him on the roster and allow him to continue to just be comfortable, control his fate. And that's probably pretty important, even if it's a little bit of a side note here. So Chris Paul's desperation level is a seven out of 10. And the reason being that it's so high, I think he still really could use that championship on his resume and not even just the resume legacy nonsense of it all. But I think he just really wants one. And I think it matters to him. Is it as important as it maybe was when he was a Clipper or a Rocket? No, I think he's, I think he has some perspective on it, but it's still vitally important. It's just would be so huge for him to finally get over that hill. And this as things currently stand, as far as the eye can see right now, is Paul's best best path to winning one, to get a top 10, top 15 talent right now in the league into the door, a third bonafide superstar. That's, that's the best path to win a title, even if there are some questions after that. One of the people who will be able to decide those questions after that will be Sean Marks, who is negotiating on the other side of this whole thing from... James Jones. We'll also talk about Monty Williams and Devin Booker and their level of desperation. First today's show brought to you by Rock Auto. With so many makes, models, trim packages, and all the nonsense, it's very, very hard these days to walk into a chain auto parts store or heaven forbid a dealership and expect to get what you need quickly and at an affordable price. So save time and money and switch to Rock Auto. You can save 30, 50, even 100% more for the same exact parts. And Rock Auto is not BSing you. They are a family business. They've been serving do-it-yourselfers online for over 20 years. What I love to say there is, who's been doing anything online for over 20 years? I don't even feel like I've been online for 20 years, and these guys have been doing their thing, cranking out cheap, quick parts that get the job done to do-it-yourselfers across the country. So go explore their easy-to-use website. Again, that's rockauto.com today to find the solution to your auto parts needs. Again, that's rockauto.com right now to see all the parts available for your car or truck and write Locked On in their How Did You Hear About Us box so they know we sent you. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, and all the parts your car will ever need. RockAuto.com. Monty Williams, head coach of the Suns, of course, heading into year four, um, which is a little bit important here because you would, you would think he signed a five-year contract. So... His extension, his, his next contract to be the coach of the Suns might be somewhat entangled with this. In fact, it, it, it almost certainly is. I think at the same time, though, it would take a lot for Monty to like need to worry about his job security. He, he really is sort of the face of this franchise alongside Devin Booker. Um, on the negative side, when it comes to Kevin Durant specifically and the you know will he, won't he side of all of this, KD would be another player whose relationship with Monty was a big reason why Durant would want to be here. And that's a big deal, but it's also like, okay, well, if it doesn't happen, does that fall on Monty in any way, shape, or form? Does it not? And I also think another sort of good bad for Monty is KD is kind of that exact final scoring option. I think it's it's clear now after three years that the ability to score – at the, at the ends of games, at the end of a shot clock, at the end of a half or whatever, is the, the piece that Monty, because of the way the roster has looked, because of whatever you want to blame it on, hasn't been there, right? And I think it's mostly the roster, but if you get that piece as a coach, then there's a certain level of, all right, you have everything you need. Let's go get the job done, right? So I think that there would any coach who gets a ton of talent and has high expectations, there's always going to be pressure. And I think this would sort of just up the ante. So Monty Williams desperation level to me is only a four out of 10 because I feel like if the trade doesn't happen, um, Monty won't really get the blame for that. But I feel like as the negotiations play out, Monty could eventually get the ax as well. If the Suns don't get it done, because I think if Jones were to leave, Monty could eventually be forced out as well, and and nobody wants any of that. Sean Marks, let's get to him really quickly. General manager of the Brooklyn Nets, 
just a few things here on him. So he has to nail these moves. I mean, that's, that's pretty obvious. Um, he has to prove he can finally stand up to the stars and get a return that he wants and win these trades or get equal fair return on both the Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant trades if he wants to keep his job. But I also think Marks is a pretty young general manager, similar to James Jones. So to me, this is actually with Marks, and I know this is, you know, Suns fans might not care about Sean Marks' feelings or anything, but it's important to keep in mind what his motivations are here because he's the guy who kind of holds the keys to the kingdom with all of this. And Suns fans' hearts might be broken or uh, mended by Sean Marks himself. So I just want to say here, I think this is more about pride for him and respect around the league, among that front office, the people that, that work for him, just to not become the guy who got chewed up and spit out by superstar NBA players because he gave them too much control of the franchise or Sean, or, or Joe Sy gave them too much control or along the way they were just able to completely take over and Sean Marks probably wants to say, Hey, I can go out and win these trades. I can set us up well for the future. I can prove to my owner that I belong here to, to see this out, see this through. And I'm not the guy who just fell apart when, when I had the chance to go build a super team. Still, I think there's a lot of great packages out there and Sean Marks is he would have to really drop the ball to not be on his way to a nice rebuild. Now, does that mean he keeps his job and gets to, to be the one to oversee that rebuild? I'm not sure, but for all intents and purposes, everything that we've ever heard, um, Marks is a guy, uh, sorry, Joe Sy is a guy who lets his basketball operations department exist how it is. Marks has been there for a long time now, and I don't think he has to worry about the job part of it. But the bottom line is he's the general manager who needs to win these trades. And he's the guy who holds all of the cards. It's a 10 out of 10. Sean Mark's desperation level is a 10 out of 10. This all rides on him. Devin Booker, last but not least here, just signed a Supermax and Kevin Durant working out, the trade happening, Durant coming here is the best path to winning a title while during Book's career. Right. I mean, if Booker wants to win a title as a son, we don't know what the next six years will hold, which is how long he has now committed. But it's hard to imagine a better shot, I guess, other than being up 2 0 on Giannis and the Bucks to winning a championship. This is as good as it's going to get. On the other hand, just to play devil's advocate a little bit. The non-Kevin Durant path might actually result in the best, best overall kind of continuity and longevity. Right, If they kept Dayton, kept Bridges, kept Johnson, and, and just kept building this young core, I'm not sure if that's a championship team, but you're probably going to be a 45 to 55 win team that entire time. Booker will be comfortable, continue to have a chance at a very nice career, probably something similar to what we've seen minus the finals uh, at birth in the beginning of it all of uh, Damian Lillard right? Or players like that who win a lot for a long time, but maybe don't ever get there. That's not a terrible career, but this Kevin Durant version is obviously the best. Like every NBA star, um, I think the bottom, what he would choose is to take that, obviously took the extension. He's now locked in. We say committing to the Suns. That doesn't mean anything in the NBA today. I don't think any of us would ever want to see someone who's been so loyal eventually not be in Phoenix, but he can always win a title with Kevin Durant now. And then if that ends up chewing up the team and there's not much of a future and they, the, the rebuild is kind of tough. Well, you could, you could imagine Booker when he's, you know, 30 deciding, okay, you know, maybe I'm, maybe I want to explore other options. So I guess I'm just saying that from Booker's perspective, this is not a very high stakes situation. He has been paid. He's going to win a lot, no matter what. And he's been so successful wins wise, championship wise, uh, you know, deep run equity for this team that there's not a lot at stake for him. And he's not involved in these negotiations at a high level. Obviously, I think he had some connection to Durant. There was little rumors here and there that they had been talking and know each other well, more than we might have thought all that. So he's a he's a big role in this. And I've been talking about that all week, but I wouldn't say that there's desperation or pressure on Devin Booker. So Devin Booker's desperation level here, two out of 10. He's going to win and be paid no matter what. 
All right, that'll do it for today's show, guys. Uh, we are still on Kevin Durant watch. I do not know when we will get a resolution. Part of me feels like it might be a little while at this point. Part of me wonders if it was just everybody wanted their holiday weekend and we need to wait. Part of me wonders, do we just need to wait until some of these big free agent deals have been finalized officially so that those new players and new cap situations can be used to make it happen? I do not know, but it's hard to tell. Um, deadlines make deals is what they say, right? And there's not really a, main, a major deadline coming up that's obvious. So we'll have to continue to watch it, of course. We're all glued to our phones, you and me both. Keep it right here on Locked on Suns, YouTube, favorite podcast platform, wherever you listen or watch podcasts. We'll be here every day counting down until Kevin Durant, ideally, becomes a Phoenix Sun. Now go make Locked on NBA your second listen, guys. Catch up on everything else going on around the league.